What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose, Delarose.com. That's D E L A R R O Z.com. And down in my description, you can sign up for my newsletter, grab a free graphic novel just for signing up. So if you love comics, that's the place to go. We always have great comic news here, great comic streams, great comic reviews, as we're about to do. This is a comic related review more than a comic review. It's Ditko Shrugged by David Curry. And it's published by Hermes Press. I'm a big fan of Hermes Press. Got these beautiful hardcovers. And I've got their Zorro books and their Buck Rogers books. And I'm trying to hunt down some of their shadow stuff that's out of print. But they do a good job, typically, and are people who are really interested in the history of comics. And this is no different. So Ditko's got a few biographies made about him at this point. I believe there's actually another one coming out in just a couple of months. Uh, but the primary one that people know of is Blake Bell's uh, biography, which is under Fantagraphics. So I'll talk a little bit about how that compares to this and the differences between the two as we go on. Uh, they've got some nice art. Uh, they've got a sort of a paperback construction with uh, non-glossy paper. I appreciate that. I really don't like glossy paper. So I think, I think this is a really nice constructed book. It's got an intro from Mark Ditko after we get through some of the, the artwork at the beginning, who is Steve Ditko's nephew, who corresponded with a, a little bit online. Super nice guy, and uh, he's really interested in preserving his uncle's legacy, which I appreciate. So this was nice to actually have someone from the family uh, involved here. And you'll see that there's a few uh, sources of Mark Ditko through here. So... Uh, David Curry, uh, interestingly, has corresponded with, with Steve Ditko quite a bit. And there's a lot of letters back and forth that uh, he reprints the bulk of them in here. And it's kind of nice because you get this firsthand perspective of a lot of the issues that kind of are, are a lot of rumors online. So we get an, a nice uh, introduction at the beginning where it talks about a little bit of his objectivist work and all that before getting into uh, everything here. It starts out with a little bit of like, you know, commentary uh, about, you know, him leaving Marvel in 1965 and kind of going his own way. Somebody very different than you would get in uh, most things. And then it kind of delves into a his historical period after, after uh, kind of dealing with some of the obvious questions about, you know, his relationship with Stan Lee and things like that. And, uh, and what he got into here. Here's one of the letters reprinted. Uh, pretty awesome that these are included in here. I'm, I enjoy that. I also enjoy that he talks to Ditko um, with, or, or rather about Ditko with, without a judgment against his philosophy. One thing about the other biographies I've read, including Blake Bell's, is, is it kind of has like the sneering attitude about his independent work and his philosophy. David Curry obviously very much respected Mr. Ditko and his choices, uh, which which I appreciate reading this because it comes with a different um, perspective, which is much more neutral or positive towards Mr. Ditko, which I, I think the man deserves. I mean, he really lived a life where he did it on his own terms. He created art on his own terms, and he stuck to it no matter what. There's a lot of talk in here where there's a couple of different assignments that would have been really cool for him to have or really would have made a ton of money if he would have done it. And he just said no, just because he wasn't interested in doing on that. And he's got his own work. He doesn't really want to revisit the past, which is something that a lot of commercial artists uh, do very often. They kind of re regurgitate their greatest hits. But Steve Ditko just wanted to do what he wanted to do. And I really respect that uh, quite a bit. It starts out with his, um, after the intros and all that, a, a sort of history of how he got into comics uh, the things that he was interested in and the, the awesome artwork he did at Charlton and other companies in the 1950s with short works, which I highly recommend picking up the Fantagraphics uh, Ditko archives because they reprint almost all of that work and it's really, really good. Uh, it's very, very much worth the read compared to a lot of comics. Pre and uh, post code, it all worked out very well. Of course, we then get into the 60s and the Spider-Man era, which is a, for three years takes a long uh, is a long chapter compared to you know a lot of stuff that gets glossed over later. But it, uh, you know, of course, this was 
the most intriguing era for most people. So I, under I understand that. Now, as a person who's read a lot of Ditko stuff, I would say that a lot of the information in here is uh, maybe somewhat repetitive, uh, you know, compared to other biographies. There's not that much actual information about the man that's out there. Uh, but because it includes so many letters, uh, it's got a, a different cool vibe to it. Uh, and second, I would say that um, David Curry filled in a lot of the information with interviews with like Roy Thomas or interviews with, you know, some some other artists or, or inkers or people who worked with Ditko or people who worked around Ditko. Um, I'm a big Tom DeFalco fan and Tom DeFalco has, has some nice uh, interviews in here also. So you, you get a lot of the history of Marvel Comics in here even more than Ditko. I would say the actual Ditko content when you get into it because it, it circles around Jack Kirby and what's going on with him at Marvel Comics uh, during a lot of this is about 50% of the volume. So you get a much more uh, deep look into the industry, which I think is important in understanding Ditko's life and Ditko's uh, choices later where he really was disinterested and burnt out on uh, just the way that the comic industry acted. Um, so if you're interested in just a history of Marvel Comics, don't don't think that this is like, you know, a big treatise on his objectivist work, I, which, you know, I mean, he does cover that in here as it goes later on. And Steve Ditko makes his choices with Mr. A and uh, works for Wits End and uh, and, and does more Charlton work in the 70s, but it covers everything. You see, there's some Roy Thomas pictures right there. Really covers a whole swath of Marvel Comics, which is really interesting. And of course, his work with DC also. Um, so I read this in one day. I gobbled this up pretty good. I loved it. Uh, and like I said, he, he does cover some of the objectivist work at the end a little bit and goes into... Uh, you know, what happened with Steve Ditko's death, which is really bizarre. I guess he was having health tr troubles for months and, you know, nobody really knew of it. And they, they found him three days after he had passed in, in his little studio there. Kind of an odd, odd thing. Uh, but that is uh, exactly what happened. It goes over some of the stuff with Stan Lee. It dispels a couple of rumors in there, uh, which, which circle around the Internet. And uh, from Steve Ditko's words himself or from Mark Ditko's account of his uncle. So pretty nice stuff. Uh, this is uh, by far and away, I've, I've read probably this is my third biography of Steve Ditko I've read. The best that I've read. I really appreciate the attention to detail. Uh, I really appreciate all the historical Marvel stuff and all of the uh, direct correspondences with the people involved because that sort of thing presents a much more objective picture uh, than it does uh, from people who are looking in from that sort of Spider-Man fandom perspective, right? Which is what you get for the most part. You, you, you usually get people who are talking, hey, I love Spider-Man, why'd this guy go and do all this other weird stuff? Versus, wow, this guy, uh, you know, really did a lot of cool art. He was really one of the most innovative designers out there uh, in terms of just character concepts, layouts. Uh, some of his styles uh, have just been copied and, and uh, you know, built upon since then. Very cool. So enjoyable. Uh, highly recommend this. This is, a, this is a 10 out of 10 as far as biographies go. And I'll leave this in the description below because I know Herbie's Press is a small press. So I want them to you know be able to help sell their books a little bit. So check that out. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know if you've read this or you're intending on getting it. And I will talk to you guys soon.